everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Uh, I can't wait when my enemies are nearby. I was trying to get my mana back up. Magicka. Magicka's still strange. So they mentioned the Ender King. Um, I understand if nobody knows who the hell that is, because he was back in uh, Daggerfall. Though, on the other hand, I don't know if I should expect anything from... Oh, I've already won this. Ooh, Fortify Block. Let's do some of that, huh? I just got a heavy armor up. Um, on the one hand, why underestimate Elder Scrolls fans? Like, of course they would go backwards and find, in the, like, minute minutia, such as minutia is. Um, but also, like, we're like, oh, fucking Sky Babies, all these new kids getting in on Elder Scrolls. Like, I'm a Sky Baby. I can rent a car now. <laughs> Like, I'm one of those new annoying kids who's fucking 10 years old and I'm getting into the Elder Scrolls and I don't know why, like, I'm looking at this big, like, stone wall of prophecies and I don't know what the big brass guy is. Oh, hey. So this leads around. Cool. Tomb of the Raymond Emperors. Um... Also, like, minor detail, but it's been 10 years since Skyrim came out. I and people have had time. Okay, so it looks like it just naturally leads you to there. So it's, I'm supposed to be here. I and everyone have had time since, you know, Skyrim has come out. To go play everything else, because there's 10 Skyrim years now. Alain Valdemar... Rielus. Rielus? Illegible inscription. Raymond of Cyrodiil. He defeated the Akaviri Horde and brought peace to Tamriel. Presumably died in 2762. Raymond II, crowned in 8212. He fell in battle uh, against Dark Elves, 57 years old. After a reign of 39 years and 8 months, wanting a day. Oh, one day short of 8 months. And illegible. Ah. Ha. Ah. Ah. Opportunity to grind, right? Oh. Ah. oh, I'm a journeyman of restoration. Shway. Mm. Hell yeah. Mm. Let's drain some ah. more. Mm. Um, but yeah, people are like, oh, hashtag sky babies, but like Man, it's been 10 years since Skyrim has come out. We have had time to go and see all the other games. Enemies still nearby, huh? Well, I guess maybe I'm supposed to do this later. There was that one area in here that I didn't go. Through here, right? Hall of Judgment. Because I went to the catacombs from here, and then I didn't go elsewhere. And there's this ghost fella. Um, the point is, is that, like, I've not played Daggerfall. It's extremely, uh, rough as a video game. And, like, granted, you know, The Elder Scrolls goes through periods of... The Elder Scrolls has gone through an evolution of, like, the story gets less complicated and the mechanics get less complicated while the game gets better looking and more playable. Fallout, when the same thing happened to Fallout. Um, but, like... Arena is barely functioning and also I, you know, I want to say barely playable. Uh, and some people are like, oh, Daggerfall, that's the only RPG that I can play, you know, that's the only RPG that's like worthwhile to play. All the other RPGs, they, you know, they don't have enough depth. Wait, what happened? Oh, this is busted. That ain't good. I guess that's a function of me not being able to repair it myself and I have to go find somebody who can, huh? Did 
It doesn't say empty on these, so... Though I'm pretty good about looting them, so I don't know why I checked. Whatever. Okay, so this leads somewhere new. Or potentially old. Looking like old. Sankator Catacombs. I was in there, yeah? Hey, my acrobatics went up. So what about this? Where does this go? Entry hall. Okay, that makes sense. Did I go to the catacombs? Anyway, there's this confusing thing in, in Daggerfall where, like, Daggerfall has multiple endings. And they don't want to be like, oh, by the way, your ending is not canon. You shouldn't have picked that one. It wasn't canon, because that's lame. But then why have multiple endings, you know? Because this is where other games wouldn't even bother have multiple endings. And, you know, not have this problem at all. Um, and as and also like Daggerfall is even the only game to have multiple endings. Does this even work to block you? I'm sure I'm getting a lot of ectoplasm. Okay, an unlooted chest. Oh, and a guy. Cool. Let's just top off, shall we? And then let's wait for all of our juice to top off, too. Um, but you can basically give an amulet that will power the Brass God Numidium and turn someone into a new god. <clears throat> The name of this new god is Talos, but who it is? By a frost and lightning have flowed from your fingertips. You're a journeyman to destruction magic and can cast journeyman level destruction spells. Hell yeah. I'd love to see it. My Lauren armor went up too. I might have two levels when I go to sleep. It's going to be a while before that can happen. I don't know why I picked that up. I didn't need it. Mishaxi's Cleaver. Did I, did I get that? Yeah, I did. Disintegrate armor. Hot damn. I can, actually, I'll put this one on and dump this one. Since right now I can't repair things. Nice. Hell yeah, happy to hear. Um... Anyway, there's this dude who I think is called the Underking, and I think is also called Metamarco. Um, and I think is also called the King of Worms, and he's a necromancer. Obviously. Um, because he's called the Underking and the King of Worms. I mean, come on, that guy's a necromancer, right? Oh, yeah, I love that pathing. Path just draw a straight line, don't mind the rocks in the way. If you were a real ghost, you could just phase through it, but you're just somebody wearing a ghost-colored suit. I believe that's, in fact, how the, uh, like, thing works. Oh, does this change how I... Still eight points, and it costs ten. But yeah, I think that's how the, um... Kastnar. How the ghost tech works. They just put a filter on some guy to make him translucent. And this is just... This is a... Have you seen a lady? I have. That was the dream. I am awake now. Oh, interesting. My oath to the oh, man. Um, I'll try to skip past this, but anyway. Uh, Daggerfall is notorious for not having one of the cool, like, uh, m shall we say minimalist covers? I want to walk with this guy because I want to observe his pathing. But... You know, if you look at Oblivion, 
it's got a cool, interesting, minimalist cover. And this is also the case with most copies of Skyrim and Morrowind. They just have the symbol of the game. Um, Morrowind has Almsivy, uh, Oblivion has the Oblivion symbol, and Skyrim has the Imperial Dragon on the cover. Um, on just a background of like, you know, tan, brown, black. They have very minimalist covers. The Daggerfall cover has a big skeleton guy going, yeah, and he's got his claw. Up. Um, that's allegedly the Underking. Or fuck, are the Underking and Mana Marco two different people? I can't remember. Ugh, this game's this this series is lore, honestly. Uh, anyway, the point is is that you can give this amulet to multiple people. And only one of them is Tiber Septim, the Emperor, who everyone else believes become Talos. And, you know, for most people, that's the canon ending because it's also the good ending. But in Morrowind, they had to be like, all these endings are canon. So, technically, all three of them got the amulet. But not as much as would have happened if any one of them had got it individually. And Talos is technically three people combined into ah. one. Uh, they have dispelled the enchantment. The way to the armor is open. Oh, cool. Ah. Just top off? Yeah. Armor of Tiber Septum. Hell yeah. That's hard save, actually. Because I want to put it on and I, I want to make sure that that doesn't fuck it up. Yeah, that's what Tiber Septum wore? I believe it. Cool. Hell yes. Hell yes. Thank you, guys. Ha! Do you have any dialogue for me now? We have fulfilled our last... Ethereus is loosely um, the heaven equivalent. You know, it's a realm outside the other realms, and it's beautiful and full of light. And you all have the same line and voice. Gotta save that money somewhere. Sean Bean isn't cheap, guys. Cool. How much ectoplasm did I actually pick up there? 30 ectoplasms. Now, I might have already had some, but I killed 30 ghosts. Damn. Can I rest yet? No. I guess the whole area is just unsafe. I'm talking about Elden Ring again, but this is another thing that I really like from Elden Ring. Because um, obviously Dark Souls is well known for its bonfire and for, you know that bonfire moment that you get, and for how safe and cool and good bonfires are, in general. But, wait. I got lost in there, and I came from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm remembering last episode backwards. So I, this is what I have to do. Um, Dark Souls is obviously well known for the bonfire moment. But making the bonfire be a full rest, you know, a long rest in D&D terms. Just making this is the thing that tops you off and fills you up and will always do that. That's great. And that's something that Bloodborne and Demon Souls miss out on. Because it's like, okay, do you want to be full? Use an item or just die, you know, and that'll top you off. Uh, I don't agree with that as much. Ah! We're just trading hits here. <clears throat> All right. Bone meal. Let's get as much healing out of this damage as we can, and then we'll rest and take a level. I love the little messages that Morrowind and Oblivion give you when you level up. I don't know if Daggerfall does them. 
Anyway, yeah, for most people, they're just like, yeah, Tiber Septim became Talos, and now we have a human god, and all the other ones are elves. Or the race and identity of the gods is identical to that of their... is identical to that of the observer. So, like, if you're a red guard, your gods are all red guards, you know? If you're a Nord, your gods are Nords. Because it's a thing where, like, well, what and who are you? Oh, a bandit. Oh, what's the matter? Is the baby gonna cry? Can I not rest, guys? Is there nothing here that'll let me rest? Please. Ooh, more skeletons, though. Always fun to fight skeletons. It's a standby. Miscellaneous loose Daedra. Why does it make the little cheap sound? That's a little silly, I think. Um... Sorry, I'm just thinking about my past things. Right, so for most people, like, Talos is Tiber Septum and vice versa. And that's where a lot of games actually leave it. Like, they don't even mention that Talos is technically three people who all achieved almost divinity. And with all three of them together, they have achieved a full divinity. And that's how Talos is the ninth divine. Um... But, like, people people mock Skyrim because it's like it doesn't mention that, you know, Talos isn't just Tiber Septim. Because that's not canon. But, like, even as early as Morrowind, like, people are actively erasing the parts of Talos that are not Tiber Septim. People don't give credit to the other guys in Talos. They're just like, yeah, it's Tiber Septim. And so, like, I'm not going to... Obviously, you know, Heimsker is a, is a minor internet meme. Heimsker, the NPC from Skyrim, who, you know, shouts about Talos in uh, Morrowind, Morrowind, Whiterun's Town Square. But, like, I, enjoy, I like Heimsker's speech for a couple reasons. One, it just shows where Talos, like, crazy Talos cult devotion is right now. It shows that, like... The Empire is now fuck Talos. We can't have that anymore. And now people who are preaching about Talos are seen as weirdo cultists. When, like, he's supposed to be the Empire's patron deity. And to many people, he's the only human deity. Because all the other deities, to all the elves claim that all the deities are elvish. Pretty high up here, guys. Um... And while, like, the Nords have human aspects and versions of it, because Talos began life as a human, and because, you know, specifically he was Tiber Septim, who is an Imperial or a Nord or a Breton, but to most people a Nord, who became an Imperial. It's, look, it's complicated. Elder Scrolls lore. All things are true and none of them are. And all of them are partially true. Um, ooh, good popping. But anyway, um, Talos is the only deity who is always human because he's a deity of human origin. And so it's, you know, it means something that he is human and the idea that this great human empire, the only time that humans have ever been able to work together on something in the Elder Scrolls. And what's more, you know, dark elves and, and orcs happily work and enjoy employment oh. in the empire. Like, Tiber Septim made that deal with Vivek. And, like, look, they're all friends now, you know? The orcs happily have, um... Well, you know, not happily, but... It's just a thing where, like, the orcs are included in the Empire's armies. They they have a lot of good work. You know, they find work there. 
And for this human achievement to not have its human deity behind it, the only human deity, the only 100% human deity, some would even argue 300% human, because, you know, it's three guys. That's interesting. And, to, and for Skyrim to show you that this is where Talos worship is now, because most people went to Whiterun first, um, just because it's the thing in the middle of the map, it's the most built up hold, it's the biggest city, technically. Um, there are some that are geographically larger or have, like, technically more people, but, like, Whiterun is the biggest deal because it's the dead center of town. And because melee combat is a lot of what people were engaging in in Skyrim, and the melee faction is there, people were like, yeah. Um, but anyway. Hmm. Sorry, just thinking. Um, I'm walking there the long way because I wanted to talk here. But anyway, I like that, um... Because deities are a function of their belief. People believe... You know, when people have a guy appear to them and he's a deity, sometimes their appearance will be... based on whatever they believe her to be. So, like... I think when you meet... <gasps> His name's Wolf? the guy who may or may not be an aspect of Talos in, in Morrowind, you know, he's a Nord because everyone's like, yeah, Tiber Septim, even though he's the original Imperial and may have actually genetically have been a Breton, everyone thinks of him as a Nord and he used the traditional Nord way of fighting, the, the, the voice, you know, speaking the Thum, because he was a tongue. Oh. Like, he's a Nord. And so, like, you meet a Daedric Prince or a, a you know, a Reen, a, a manifestation of a guy, and they are however they are, however you think they are. So the Kaijit will all see gods as cat people. Um, and the Argonians often see gods as lizard people or as parts of the Hist. And, you know, when you're a dark elf talking to guys, they're like, hey, I'm a dark elf like you. Um, and belief can influence a deity. And the idea that, like, even if Tiber Septim is not all Talos and vice versa. That doesn't matter. He's becoming all Talos and eventually he will be all Talos because his people's belief of, you know, this guy is Tiber Septim. Tiber Septim is Talos. This guy is Talos. That is eventually actually actively taking them over and Talos is becoming Tiber Septim. Like after Tiber Septa became Talos. And that's cool. Um, and so it's interesting that, like, for this game that's like, yeah, Tiber Septim, the awesome dude who became Talos, and the fact that because this is the most imperial of all of the games, technically, um, this has the most emphasis on Tiber Septim. Because in Morrowind, it's like, hey, Talos, Ninth Divine, new cool thing that's going on, you know? We care about Talos as Divine. And in uh, Skyrim, it's Talos, Mighty Talos, Izmir of the North, you know, all that cool shit that we love. He's our, he's our pagan patron deity, because we're all Nords. We love that. Um, sorry, my brain came up short there. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, can I rest here? Yes, I can. Hell yeah. Oh, but that's waiting and not resting. Do I have to be on the road? Let me just jump out of here. Ah. Hey, acrobatics go up. Oh. <clears throat> I do want to get this level. I, I've been I've been sitting on it for like a whole episode. But anyway, yeah, that's just um some thoughts on on Tiber Septim and the fact that this game is like, yeah, the Underking was real. And, and Daggerfall happened? No? Nothing? Okay. Maybe there's a bed in there that I can hang out in. Am I thinking of Morrowind where waiting and sleeping are technically the same thing? It's just that you wait in towns and you sleep on roads? Oh, fuck, I might be. Whatever. I got a point in acrobatics because of it. And I grinded resto more. Yeah, look at that, 51. 
I was gonna say, wow, that's my highest skill, but in fact, alchemy is, because I've been grinding the shit out of alchemy. My progress on the Mysterium Xarxes is slow, I'm afraid. How goes your search for the armor of Tiber Septim? Well, good luck. Good news, in fact. The Septim blood may flow through my veins, but you have the soul of a hero. Damn right. The armor of Tiber Septim himself. Joffrey will be amazed to see it. You can reassure Joffrey that I will not destroy the armor. <laughs> All I need is a scraping of Talos's divine blood. The blades are as touchy as priests about relics of Tiber Septim. It's so it cool that, like, the concept of Tiber Septim is still just such a cool thing. Like... A, a, a guy becoming a god, and now, like, hey, humanity's got a thing going on. And the way that it all blends together with, like, the elves have ancestor worship, but the biggest, most stuck-up of elves all think that the gods are their ancestors, and so they have regular worship as well. And, like, to them, worshipping a Zeus is worshipping an ancestor. But for all the other guys, it's like, my grandfather was cool. That's who I'm worshipping. And the Dunmer ha- Ugh. It's such a cool concept. And the idea that, like, Tiber Septim is just a dude who tried really hard, threw his hat into the ring, hell yeah. While you were gone, I've made some progress in deciphering the Mysterium Xarxes ritual. The third item we need is a great Welkin stone. Welkin stone, huh? You may have run across lesser Welkin stones. They're fairly common in alien ruins. But a great Welkin stone will not be easy to come by. They have been plundered one by one over the years due to their great value to mages and occultists. I can only assume. There is only one place that is rumored to still contain one. The ruins of the alien city of Miskarkand. Miskarkand. A place where many have perished seeking its great stone. But nothing else will do, so you must succeed where all others have failed. That's the name of the game, man. Tell me about Miskarkand. The capital of one of the ancient alien kingdoms which flourished in Cyrodiil before the rise of men. It is said that the ruins are still haunted by the vengeful spirit of its last king. True or not, it is not a place to enter lightly. Be careful. Okay. Be careful, my friend. I know you've braved you've many dangers already. Hell yeah. But Miss Garkand is not to be taken lightly. Oh, yeah, I dumped all these. Um, I wanted to talk about what they what they talked about in the... Oh, right, I was wearing that. <laughs> Here, give me the shirt off your back. Uh, fine, I, I guess. Oh, I was going to look for a bed in there, right. Pardon me. I was going to talk about something else that they said as well. Um, there is a, hello, Joffrey, there's a concept in the Elder Scrolls, let me see if there's something to read here first, actually. Yeah, you woke today with a new sense of purpose, you're no longer afraid of failure, failure is an opportunity to try something new. Bump intelligence, bump endurance, uh, let's bump speed, yeah. Love to see it. Um, something that they said. One of the ghosts referred to the dream as where he had just been in life. And... And now, after dying, now he's awake. Oh, let's look here. Progress to next level. What is this, like, 6 out of 10? 7 out of 10? Is there a thing that says skill increases? 300. Is that right? Or is that because I had to edit my stats at one point? It might not be, honestly. Oh, traditional Japanese sliding door. Good evening, sir. Good evening. 
Wow, this place is swanking. Um yes, I was going to talk about that. So this is a this is a minor thing that's like this is deep deep lore. But as it happens, hey yo. The Elder Scrolls world is the dream of a super god. So like in the way that like oh, yeah, there are the divines and the Daedra, the Aedra and Daedra. And there's those guys. There are actually two gods above them, which are the not ah. and and are. You know, um, I'm trying to remember the names. One of them is Sithis or Padome. Nice, hell yeah. One of them is Sithis or Padome. Um. What's the other one's name? Whatever. I'll do this next time, actually. It's been 30 minutes. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Oblivion. I'm sorry to make you wait the uh, length of time that it will be until we actually have a uh, another episode of this, but um, I had a good time. I hope you did, too. This has been Oblivion. I hope you have a good time. A good day. A good week until the next episode? Sorry, the schedule is all over the place. Um, I'll see you then. Bye.